Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Karen. Construction noise in the kitchen. Hmm. Well, looks like you're getting a new kitchen. <laughs> Wish I were, but that's not happening in the, any time in the new, near future. Um, good morning and uh, welcome. Wednesday morning again, and I'm going to uh, do a demo in watercolor, and today's demo is going to be um, painting eyes. Now, I don't have the best model, but I took a picture of myself and I'm going to paint my eyes. <laughs> so, uh, so that's what I'm going to do today. <clears throat> uh, so, uh, just before we start, if, if you're tuning in, um, make sure you put a comment in the chat. And I know that some of you have said that um, you're not seeing the chat at all. So, um, and, and you can't put comments below. So I'm trying to work around that. If anybody actually knows why that happens, I'd appreciate it because, uh, yeah, some of these people want to know, want to want to comment or, or say good morning and they can't. So I'm wondering whether or not um, the chat below or the comment section below is deactivated until the live stream ends. I don't know. Um, but the the live chat uh, if you're on maybe it's the device you're on as well if you're on an iPad you may not be able to see that um, that chat unless you activate it um, there might be a dot 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 somewhere I don't know I I, I haven't really tried too much uh, watching live streams on YouTube with my iPad so so maybe that's uh, maybe that's something I need to explore and and see how that reacts for me but in any case, good morning, and uh, looks like we have a, a nice day, a nice September day here. And uh, yeah, let's jump right in. So here's my, um, here's my demo here, and uh, I'm just going to be painting on some Arches 140 pound cold press paper. I am not, um, I'm not going to stretch this. This is just a study. I, you know, if I were doing a painting, I would stretch it soak it and staple it down and all of that, but I'm not going to do that today. And uh, here's my palette, which is uh, just, it's just a simple travel palette and it, it's folding, although <laughs> I've added a lot of water to all of my wells. So this is not a time that I could certainly be folding it, but I'm just going to clear an area or two here so that I have some good areas for mixing color. Um, and while I'm doing that, I'll explain the brushes that I'm going to be using. Mostly what I'm going to be using, because recently I ordered these and um, I've been playing around with them and having so much fun, is um, some squirrel hair travel brushes that I ordered online. And uh, they come in a... This, this one I bought four together and uh, they're very soft bristles but they hold a lot of paint and water but what I love about them and they don't look that pointy right now but when I get them wet they come to a beautiful point like a nice little sharp point there so it holds a lot it comes to a nice point gives me a lot of flexibility good morning Dorothy hi Janet hi Mary um, oh you're so welcome you're so welcome it's my pleasure to uh, to uh, offer these if you don't know I do teach pretty much full-time. I'm I'm uh, going to be starting up my fall workshops at all my different uh, venues very soon. Uh, when I say venues, I'm talking about different places where I teach. I teach in Oakville, Ontario, and at the Oakville Art Society. I teach at Dundas Valley School of Art in Dundas, Ontario. Um, I teach at the Royal Botanical Gardens um, in Burlington. And so that between that and my own Zoom workshops that I conduct every Friday uh, and my in-studio <laughs> workshops that I have every Tuesday, that's every day of the week, isn't it? So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a busy girl when it comes to teaching watercolor, but I love it. And, uh, and I, I have managed to uh, keep my Wednesday mornings open for you guys. So... I'm glad you could join me. Um, if, without you, there'd be really no point in my being here. So, good morning, Melody. 
Sarnia. Oh, now the, up north, I know that they had some terrible storms last night. And I saw that there was a lot of damage online. Hi, Tom. From the UK. Oh, awesome. I don't know. It'd be later in the day, later in the afternoon there, I guess, wouldn't it? So, um, yeah, so now I have a clean palette. You can see that some of this has uh, stained a little bit. Um, if you have a um, Mr. Clean Magic Eraser, that gets rid of that. Uh, you can also use cleanser, but you have to be, be sure to um, get all of that cleanser out of there. You don't want that in your paint. But um, anything like that will clean up your palette. I'm not going to bother today, but uh, let's jump in. Okay, so Squirrel Hair Brushes, Arches 140 pound cold press. Most of my paints are Da Vinci brand, uh, but uh, Winsor Newton's fantastic, Holbein, um, Daniel Smith. Uh, there's all kinds of really great brands of paint out there. Every artist has to um, find their own, uh, their own palette and uh, work with it for a while to find out what it does. Okay, so, um, so I want to talk about the reference here for a second and uh, what, a, what I would do to paint this. First of all, I do this with every painting that I do, is I, I hesitate to um, and, and just stop to look at what needs to be done. So in watercolor, I need to preserve whites or light areas. Uh, this is uh, something that differs quite uh, quite a bit from acrylics and oils and things like that because those just um, uh, you can add white on top right we can add white on top in watercolor as well but it's not the same thing so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of masking fluid now masking fluid is basically liquid latex um, if you have a latex allergy, they do actually make a, a latex-free masking fluid, which is still got latex in it, but it, the, the protein, which is what everybody's allergic to, has been removed. Um, so what I've done, this actually comes, comes like this. It's white, uh, the one that I have, but the one in this jar, it's the same one. I've just added a little tiny bit of cobalt blue to it to tint it. And the reason I do that is because I like to see where I'm putting it and uh, I tint it like you can buy ma a tinted masking fluid but I, I like to tint my own because there are circumstances where I would want to tint it a different color. Uh, if you tint your masking fluid you want to make sure that you aren't using a color that will stain your paper. If you're not sure, I would paint a little of that paint, that color onto a piece of paper, let it dry, try to lift it off. If a, a stain remains, then it's a staining color. Um, all right. Hi, Verna. Hi, Colleen. Diane. Oh. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Um, Oh, you were without power. Oh, dear. Yeah, my daughter was without power, too. She called me and said uh, that her power had gone off, but it didn't stay off too long. All right. Um, now I'm going to get myself a, uh, a brush that I can use for masking fluid. Now, this is going to be a synthetic brush. Um, I, I put a little gold paint on the end of all my brushes that I use for masking fluid just so I can identify them. And um, so it's just a beat up old synthetic hair brush and it's not that precious to me. I don't want to use my best brushes for this. I'm going to reach way over here to my little bit of soap and I'm going to coat the bristles of my brush with some soap. Any kind of soap will do. Hand soap, bar soap, the little hotel soaps, those those are fine. This happens to be brush cleaning soap and uh, I just leave it on the bristles there. And then I can dip into my paint and um, paint what I need to. Now what I'm looking at here in my reference is that there are catch lights in the eye. So I've got a uh, light area here, a uh, light area here, 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 and so on. There's a number of light areas there. And you can always tell uh, the, the lighting conditions when you look into somebody's eyes. And you, you anybody who's watched CSI would know this, right? So they, they get clues, they zoom in on 
people's eyes and they can see reflections. So uh, they can tell that, you know, there was another person in the room or something like that, right? So, um, so I want you to look like you're a CSI agent. <laughs> um, and so, um, good morning, Anne. Yes, yes, oh, excellent. Okay, you got it to work, thank you. Fantastic, okay, so what I'm gonna do with my uh, soaped up brush. Uh, let me zoom in so you can see this closer. What I'm going to do. I love having this remote here that I can just zoom right in. All right. All right. So I'm doing two eyes because when I do, uh, I wanted to point out the differences between two eyes on the same person. And yes, that's me, <laughs> but two eyes on the same person and how the shapes can be quite different if you're drawing it. Now, I, uh, in this case, just just to, for, as a time saver, I have transferred it. I basically placed it on top with graphite paper underneath and I transferred these eyes. But I do encourage drawing. Absolutely, you will have a much better understanding of uh, what it is you are painting if you uh, draw it. You've, you're thinking out the process as you are drawing something. So it, it is an important step. So I'm looking for any little bits of light area within my eye that I want to keep. So I'm gonna put a few little bits in here. And a lot of people miss this little bit here. Eyes are wet. And so consequently, oh, good morning, KG. Nice to see you. Um, yeah, in your eyes are wet. And so therefore you're going to have a little bit of shine where the uh, moisture of your eye is at the bottom. So that little, little catch light of um, tear in, in the eye will be reflected on that lower lid. All right, so I'm going to do the other eye as well. So I'm just looking for these highlights. Can I get both of these on screen at the same time? I probably can. Let's bring that down. All right, so I'm seeing all these little, little bits here and there. And I'm looking, no, there's no little highlight on this eye. So not everything that you see in one eye is mirrored in the other eye. That's that's first thing that you're going to observe when you're looking at eyes. All right, so I've, I've got masking fluid on there. Really, it will only take like just a few minutes to uh, for that to dry. Rinse out my brush in the meantime, put the lid back on my masking fluid. And I'm going to start looking at the, um, the area around the eye. A lot of people will practice an eye and they don't do very much area around an eye. But what's around the eye is um, very helpful for the expression. So in this case, um, I'm smiling slight, slightly here. So I've got, I've got smile lines. I've got a few creases. We'll call them creases, okay? <laughs> We've got a few creases under the eye. And um, um, and I wanna talk about how to do, deal with that because, you know, depending on the age of the person, uh, those lines could be, you know, fairly smooth. They could be um, quite quite deep if, if it's an older person um, with, with deep wrinkles. So they're all treated a little bit different, but I wanna talk about creases and wrinkles, first of all. Um, over here on this side, I'm going to I'm going to do a drawing. Okay, so this is basically what happens with a with a wrinkle, right? So you've got light that's coming from above. So this is your light source, which means that this part's going to be in shadow, and this part is going to be in highlight. So there are two aspects to a lot of shadows. So you're going to get highlight and you're going to get shadow as well. Uh, 
depending on how close, of course, that you're painting this. If you're painting up, you know, a really large eye, like I'm, this is larger than life uh, for me. So, yeah, I might go in and and paint all of the the uh, nuances. But what I find is that people will do just a line, and what it, what that ends up looking like is it it looks like a line. It doesn't look like it dips in and out like that with creases, right? So it just looks like you took a line and lined it. So um, I'll talk about that, but let's, first of all, I'm going to get the area wet. So I'm gonna take, um, oh, let me, let me take this squirrel hair brush here. And I'm going to wet all of this. I'm gonna wet all around the eye. going to keep loading up my brush and filling up this whole thing. Now I am, I am going around the iris or the uh, pupil here, uh, the iris and the pupil, the, the entire eyeball I'm going around because in this case the coloring is quite different than the skin. Over here not so much, it's, it's a little bit more like the skin tone because it will it's reflective, right? We've already determined that it's reflective. So it's in a lot of cases, it's going to reflect skin tones in the eye. As you get older, you will also have more, um, uh, you will have more blood vessels and things like that. So that will change the color of your eye. A child generally has very, very cool blue, bluish white kind of eyes. As, they, as a person gets older, that, that starts to get a little duller. And now I want you to notice that this corner of the eye is a real point. This corner of the eye is almost rounded and it's the perspective that's causing that. So our brains are saying, eyes are, eyes are pointed on the corner, right? And so we want, as we're drawing, we tend to want to draw that. And what we're actually seeing here is not the corner of the eye. What we're seeing is the lashes <laughs> that are coming to a point. They're meeting each other and making that point. So that a lot of people find that very hard to get their head wrapped around. But that is what happens in perspective, is that the actual skin part of your eye in perspective will not look the same if your head is turned. Both eyes will not be the same. So our, our brains tell us to, tr to make them match, but they don't match. So I'm going to mix up a skin tone here. So I'm going to come over to my palette and I'm going to take a little bit of, I'm going to use raw sienna, so a gold color. And I'm going to mix that with permanent rose. Whoops, that was way too much permanent rose. So let's go back to our raw sienna. Get that. All right, so that doesn't look like anybody's skin tone that I know. <laughs> but part of it is that I need to think about how thin or thick this paint is going to be. I'm working on a wet surface. So that's going to dilute it a little bit but I can take a scrap of paper and test the color. It's, it's a little too orange, right? So that means I've still got a little bit too much pink in there. I'm gonna put more raw sienna in, try again. That's getting closer. All right. Yep, I've got to thin this out a little bit more. Right, so thinning it out definitely is going to um, give me more of the result I'm looking for. People often say to me, well, what, what color do you use for skin tone? Well, I use lots of colors. So this puddle here, I'm going to take half of it and put it into another well. And I'm going to add more permanent rose to it because there's going to be some areas that are going to be more pink. It's going to be a little bit more pink around the eye. 
um, you know, here, here on the nose, that sort of thing. There's going to be areas that are going to be a little bit more red, other areas that are going to be a little bit more golden. Then you're going to get into shadows and you might be starting to introduce blue. So there is no one skin tone. Uh, and then there's different nationalities, right? So you're going to have dark skin tones. Uh, so you might end up bringing in um, some maybe burnt sienna or something like that. So there's no one correct answer to what color is the right color for skin tones. Um, all right, so I'm getting there. I'm getting there. This is still still a little, it looks really orangey on the screen for some reason, but I'm going to put a little bit more pink in this. And I think we're getting there. All right, so I'm going to go with a little bit more pink in this. Dilute it. Quite a bit because I want I want to make sure that I have the white of the paper showing through my paint. Um, this is common mistake that you get. Uh, a lot of people will just put the paint on too heavy for skin tones. It needs to be trans translucent. So I'm going to come in and some of the areas I'm just going to rinse my brush and paint that right over here quite light so I will just move this up a little bit there we go this photo was taken before I grew my bangs out <laughs> just tried to find something old that I had I've extended it past where it needs to go but that doesn't matter it's be all dark there anyway um, okay so I'm coming around the eye carefully here I'm going to go right through this tear duct because it's the same coloring. And the reason I like to go around or like right through things whenever possible is because it connects parts of the painting. The painting will be more connected when the color is consistent all the way through. All right, so I'm just going to keep going here. Got to got to step up the pace. Yep, and inside here, inside that part of the eye is going to be, I'm going to hide that one on the left since we can see the one I've printed out. Um, there we go, hide that. Much too dark, so I'm just getting right into my water here and thinning that out. Now, I'm, before I let this fully dry, I'm going to take a little bit of um, cobalt blue. I'll take some cobalt blue and I'm going to mix it into my color here. And I'm going to start to um, find where the shadows are. Now I have fairly deep set eyes, um, but there's some darker areas in here. So it's very important not to put too much blue in there, but um, this area here is going to be darker. And I really don't mind that it's sort of melting and blending into the other sections. In fact, I'm going to go right into the eye here. I'm going to go right through this one with that color. Which you're looking at me thinking I must be crazy. And it wouldn't be the first time I've been called that. But I am just bringing a little bit of it up into the eye because It's going to be lighter, right? So I can I can lift a little of it out. Here we go. So I'm going to take a little bit more of that color and start putting it into these shadowy areas. Now there's makeup, so there's you know a few areas where there's uh, that, and I'm just starting to hint at where these um, creases are. 
where the smile lines and so on. Just hinting at those just with the tip of my brush and getting that in there. So right now everything looks like it's all kind of wishy-washy and uh, that's pretty typical at this stage. The thing with skin tones and eyes uh, is you want a certain certain level of softness so you need to be able to um, achieve that and to do that on in watercolor is to do that with um, wet on wet so I'm coming coming in with a little bit more pink into some of these tear ducts make them a little bit more red And yeah, the paint isn't staying exactly where I put it. It's blending in a little bit, and that doesn't matter. Uh, we tend to be um, very um, uh, obsessed with lines. We've put the lines down. We want to stay within them like a coloring book. That's what we learn to do, right? And uh, so I'm just going to leave this. And uh, I might put a little bit more blue into some of these darker areas. So you see, I'm still using these same colors. Actually, I'm just using primary colors. Um, I'm using uh, raw sienna as my yellow. I'm using permanent rose as my red, and I'm using cobalt blue as my blue. So that's that's your three primary colors. <clears throat> and I can paint this almost this whole thing like this. So I'm gonna come in with a little bit of blue where the sh eyeshadow is and stuff like that. <clears throat> That's going to be dark anyway. So, All the different lighting conditions are going to give you um, a different whole si different set of shadows. Uh, if you're going to study painting eyes, get a whole page and just practice, practice all different angles and um, lighting conditions and things like that. Uh, facial expressions as well. Um, smiling eyes versus crying eyes versus you know, neutralize, um, neutralize. <laughs> and uh, so I'm going to come in and just start hinting at where some of these darks are. And I know I don't have blue eye eyebrows, but I'm painting them blue for now. Just for a little bit of softness in there. It's not pure blue. I have mixed it with a little bit of the skin tone but it's giving me a variation. So you can see now that I'm, I've got some variations in there and, and some of the creases are hinted at, but they're very, very subtle right now. <clears throat> now my paper is beginning to dry, so anything I'm putting on here right now means that I'm gonna have to start blotting my brush because if I don't, what, what'll happen is I'm gonna create blossoms and blossoms are usually not something we're after. They're not the end of the world, but um, most of the time we're trying not to, to have them. Um, but there's all kinds of ways of doing a portrait. Um, I'm going to do these fairly realistic so that, uh, you know, you can get the idea of <clears throat> the uh, realistic eye. If you can do the realistic eye, you can usually um, you can do it unrealistically, uh, do it more abstract. Uh, hi, Anne. Um, in the squirrel hair brushes. Uh, no, Canadian. Canadian, um, the squirrel hair brushes. I got these from a website called, um, hang on, uh, AliExpress. A-L-I-E-X-P-R-E-S. S, AliExpress, and um, these are squirrel hair travel brushes, and yeah, they come in different sizes, and they weren't weren't very expensive at all. Um, there's a brand name on them, uh, B I A E L K, Bi Elk, Bi Elk. I don't know how to pronounce it, but Bi Elk. You can see that this is the brush.
All right, this is a round squirrel hair brush at number 873. Uh, so you can take a screenshot of that if you like. And uh, that's the brushes that I am using. So <clears throat> back to my palette. Now look at the color I used on the skin here versus here and how it dries, how different it looks when it's dry. Um, quite a difference actually and it's going to get lighter um, as it dries so what I'll do right now um, Amazon also has travel scroll brushes um, yes yes sometimes they have synthetic squirrel hair brushes um, I actually have some of those as well uh, these larger ones I got from Amazon and uh, I love these ones too these ones are actually larger so I have a whole range of these brushes which is which is great um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, speed things up and uh, just take a dryer to this so I will mute myself just for a minute so I can dry this Okay, so it's not 100% dry. I'm not, I'm not taking the time to dry it 100%. I just needed to make um, some crisper lines, so I wanted to have it a little bit drier. It is dry enough that when I put something on, it's not going to create um, blossoms. At least I don't think so. This side actually might be a little bit still damp. It's pretty wrinkly. So just give me one more second. Okay, so that didn't take long, so we've got uh, that. Now you can see how light everything is compared to our, our reference picture here. So I've got a long way to go in terms of, of darkening things up. But I'm going to try to um, kind of get this going as quick as I can here. I'm going to start with the eyeballs because the, the one thing that trips people up all, a lot is the fact that they hear the white of the eye and they think white paint, right? So the white of the eye I've already preserved with the masking fluid, but there's a little bit of a uh, sort of a blue-gray tinge to this. Um, so I'm going to come over here and paint this in. I'm going to go right through the uh, right through the eyeball, right through the iris and everything, right to the other side. So there's a little bit of, of my colors here where I've got my blues, I've got um, some of my skin tone in there. And now there's a little bit of color between there. It's not white, it's not the white of the paper, but I am leaving some areas of light. Your eye is very reflective because it's wet. Things that are wet or shiny have very crisp lines uh, in their shadows and stuff. So I can actually come in here pretty, with just working on dry, I can work in, in here. I'm going to put a little bit more pink into this corner area. Maybe that's a little more than I want. but. And it's going to start sort of running into the white of the eye. Now that looks crazy. I look like some sort of Martian at this stage. But I wanted to do this part first. I often do this last. But I wanted to do this first just to underscore how important it is not to make the white of the eye actually white. Um, this is... This is uh, a big rookie mistake, you know, is that you you just um, leave the white of the and the person the resulting um, 
uh, effect is that the person is startled because their eyes are, look like they're bugging open. And uh, you need to have, especially, you know, a situation like this where the eyes are relaxed. It's not like I have, it's not like I've just been poked or something and I'm, my eyes are wide open. Uh, I look, I'm at rest and it's a, a natural expression. So I think this was a candid shot that somebody sent me. So that's why I chose it. It's a little more natural. Now I'm going right through my masking fluid and all of that. I don't need to worry about it. Let's get this softened up a bit. And I actually see a fair bit of kind of a little bit of um, almost a greenish color in there, which is kind of crazy. So I'm going to use a little of my raw sienna in here. Don't want to use too much and look jaundiced or something, but a little bit of yellow. So even the white of the eye has red, yellow, and blue. Surprising. So I'm going to come right through here. Running out of color here, so I'll just pick up a little more. Eyes are something that you probably are going to spend a, a good amount of time working on in your paintings because well, that's the part we look look at. We're hardwired to look at eyes. All right. And I'm going to just rinse. And you see I'm rinsing and blotting my brush here. And that's so I can soften edges. So I lay down the brush and let the point touch the edge that I'm trying to soften. Let's get a little bit more of this pinky color in the interior part of the eye, the, the um, tear duct. It's a little too pink. I'm going to dull it down a little bit. It's not, not natural looking when I just go too pink. <clears throat> and I'm going to soften edges and soften edges. All right, and it looks pretty red when it's when it's wet, but it will die down and be a little bit duller. Yeah, Karen, it it is kind of freaky, right? When you're painting the white of the eye, and I really do look like an alien here. Um, but okay, so and I have shown this before, and just to show you that, you know, if you're observing, sorry, I'm reaching over to my um, table here for something. I'm trying to reach it. Sorry, I'm rummaging around here trying to find a little piece of cardboard. All right, so here's something that you can do. Two little pieces of cardboard with a little hole poked in the middle. I just used a hole punch, but you can just use a knife and cut a little hole. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle or anything like that. But here's what I want to do. I want to put I want to isolate that color. When, when you see it surrounded by everything else, it can be so deceiving. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate the color. So if I just put that on the white of my eye in the photo, and then I put it on the white of the eye in my painting. Now that might still be a bit wet, but... And I can see, ooh, I think I need some more blue in there. In fact, it needs to be darker. Surprise, right? So um, if you're going by a, a reference image, a printed out reference image, especially if it's the same size, try this trick. It's just a piece of cardboard, nothing fancy. I've recycled something and uh, put that on there. But I'm going to get a little bit more blue into this and just slightly darker in the eye. Crazy, right? That's why you need to do the whole page of practice eyes, <laughs> because this is going to just 
play with your head like big time. It's just you're going to look at this and go, what? That can't be right. It just can't be. And uh, and then yet it is. <laughs> so I'm going to put a little bit more blue in here. And I might as well put a little more blue up around the top as well because that's definitely, and, and blue by the way is kind of a uh, color that is often you found in shadows. And I say often because it's not 100% of the time. A lemon, for example, may have a red shadow, like a warm color, but blue is very cool and so you've heard before that Shadows are cool, but there's exceptions to every rule. Well, it's not a rule, it's a guideline. So, down into here. Okay, so you can start to see that that's, that has a real uh, gloss to it now. And, uh, you know, that's where we're going to start. All these other things, like the pupil and the iris and, and the lashes and all of those things, those are things that can get added on. But you need this groundwork, all these washes underneath. You need those well established before you um, get too far with it because otherwise you're going to be trying to add it in after the details in. And I know eyes are, are, eyes are one of those things, probably the number one thing that makes you want to, to really put a... Um, put a lot of detail in and so you have to kind of just force yourself just force yourself to to push past what you think you're seeing and this this will make you this will kind of force that let's go a little bit more pink in the corner this is pretty Now I'm going to rinse and blot my brush and soften some edges. Let's get some more dark up here underneath the lid. Okay, so before we put in, before we make it into an eyeball, we're making a, a ball, first of all. So we're creating the shape of the eye. Um, that looks too dark, doesn't it? But let's see. It's not too dark at all. In fact, I'm still a little light. So this is this is a shocking, it's a real eye opener and it can tell you a lot more than I can tell you by my, I mean, I've, I've trained myself to, to know the values a little bit better, but this has been a big help to me as well in learning that, um, you know, to get, to make sure that things are correct. You know, and don't get too hung up on, oh, is that the right color or, and, and all of that. Like very often you can play with colors and, and do them all crazy colors and it still will look right as long as the values are right. So get the values right first. All right, so now I'm going to start coming in. I'm going to mix my skin tone with a little more blue here. Maybe a little more red as well. So it's this one, this puddle's a little darker, a little duller than this one. This was the fresh first wash. Um, I'm going to start coming in and shaping the eye. Now I have... Um, I have deep set eyes, as I said, so this crease on me is quite, quite dark. And I think it needs to be more blue than that. So I'm coming right down. I'm kind of ignoring the, the lashes and all of that stuff right now. This comes right down to the corner of the eye. Rinse, start softening edges. 
And you need to do this quickly because if you wait too long to soften edges, you can't soften edges. I'm going to get that in there so it's starting to establish shape. There's a slight shadow right here. A little more reddish, so I'll just pick up a little bit more of that puddle. So you see, yeah, I've got, you know, a little bit of um, each color here in my skin tone. So that's why I tell people, you know, there is no one color for skin tone. Um, pick some primaries and uh, shift them as you're painting. Let's go a little bit more this color for the eyelid. I want to make sure this doesn't end up with a crisp edge, so I'm going to blot and soften this. I could also wet the area first to, uh, to add these things in. Sometimes I do, I will, I will wet an area, but if I have a specific edge that I want straight, I will usually paint it on dry and then um, and then I will um, soften as I go. Now I'm squinting my own eyes here as I'm looking at this because I'm, I want to see where's the overall dark area below the eye. I'm ignoring wrinkles. Sorry, creases. <laughs> smile lines. <laughs> I'm ignoring smile lines right now. Um, and I'm just going to Pay attention to where I see some dark areas on the skin. And the lower lid actually has some shadow. We always remember the upper lid, but then we kind of forget that lower lid. And there is a shadow there. And let's soften that edge. Oops, that was too wet. I'm going to make a blossom there. Okay, so a little more maybe. Let's see, a little bit more. I'm going to go to skin tone and just get a little bit more of the regular skin tone in there, just not quite as thin. Okay. All right, it kind of looks like a dirty mess at the moment. <laughs> and it's the ugly stage that we have to work through, right? So Back over to this other eye. I'm going to go into this crease here again, where it's fairly dark in there. No eyelashes, no eyeball yet, or no um, iris and pupil yet. Just doing this wet stuff. little bit lighter right in here so I want to make sure I don't just fill in it's not a coloring book so I don't want to just fill in I'm going to use clean water there and again clean water just to paint with in some areas just so they stay 
pretty light and transparent. Um, going with a lighter, more of a, a darker version of the skin tone, but a lighter value than what I've got above. Then I'm going to get a little bit darker again right in this inside crease. And we've got little bits of smile line going on here too in the corners. All right, so what I'll do is, I, I think I'm going to dry this and I will start working on the eyes themselves. All right, so I didn't dry 100%, but I'm just going to push along here. Um, you can see that what I did here was I basically just extended the shadow into some of the creases. I didn't just take a liner brush and paint a line there. And uh, sometimes people will paint the whole eye, and then they'll they'll say, well, "Okay, now I got to put now I've got to add the wrinkles." No, you do that as you go along. You have to uh, keep those things in mind as you're painting. Um, all right, so I'm gonna take my cobalt blue. I'm gonna stick with the same palette. I'm gonna use cobalt blue, some raw sienna. I have kind of green eyes, so I have uh, I might have to add a little bit of yellow just because this isn't quite as green as I would like. So I'm gonna add a little yellow. I, I just picked up a little bit of um, areola in there. Let me try one more time here. A little areolan. That's a nice bright yellow like that. Some raw sienna and cobalt blue. Okay, so that's giving me more the color I'm looking for. little touch more yellow. When I'm mixing my color, I should, I should mention this because I don't really see a lot of other instructors showing this, but I'll put my color to the side and I'll add a little bit. Otherwise, I may add too much and then I have to add more of the blue and then more of the other and then more, you know, I end up, so I just put a little bit to the side and I pull it in and stir it to see what I'm getting. All right, so That's, that bluish gray is um, getting pretty close. To, so if my green is too bright, a little bit of skin tone added to it will dull it because they're complementary colors. So I'm just going to come in and start painting thin. I, I don't want to have it too thick yet. This is going to feel better <laughs> once you once you see this within with this on there. Okay. Other eye is very similar in color. You do have to watch because every once in a while you'll get somebody who uh, does actually have different colored eyes, which is fascinating, I think. I love seeing when, when you see somebody with one blue eye and one brown eye. It's so cool. I remember there was a 
fellow like that who worked at uh, the Tim Hortons near where I worked. And he was very self-conscious about it, and he ended up wearing a contact so that it, his eyes were the same color. I thought, what a shame, you're so unique. And I thought it was really cool. But I guess after a while, you get tired of people commenting on it. All right, I'm being very careful not to um, make like round the entire part of this eye here because, or the iris, because the uh, lower lid actually covers a bit of it. So I have to be careful not to. Not to make it look like the eyeball sticking out of the eye. <laughs> right. <clears throat> so there's my green. Um, I'm going to darken it now. I'm going to take a little bit more color, but with less water. So I'm going to darken this up. Raw sienna. Little permanent rose, maybe. More blue. All right, so that's giving me something darker. Definitely not as watery as what I just put down, but I can still work into it while it's wet. So if I come along, the outer part of your iris is typically um, darker. And I say typically because um, as you age, that can actually get quite light, almost gray, around the outer part of the iris. Children really have a pronounced um, dark around their iris. I'm just using the very point of my brush here and where it's in shadow, it's going to be extra dark. See, the white of the eye doesn't look so freaky anymore, right? Um, okay. This was checking something there. Um, all right. Looks like this eye might be a little bit more open than the other. Now I'm going to, I know I said I was going to stick to a limited palette here, but I'm going to take a little bit of Payne's Gray. Because Payne's Gray, I can add my pupil. And I'm using very kind of sticky paint on my brush because the paint being really runny would definitely flow too much and I would have, um, the pupil wouldn't have a shape. It would just start bleeding out. A little spot there and I'm not sure if I put any masking fluid on so I'm going to paint around it just in case I didn't. All right so I'm going to take that that paint's gray let's put it over here. mix a little of that green into it and start to do some of the striations in the eye. Oop, got to blot my brush so I don't get blossoms. But everything, the striations in the eye are typically um, radiating from the pupil. So everything kind of points towards the middle when it comes to the eye. I 
And I know that when this masking comes off, that those whites are going to be so stark and crazy looking. But I will end up um, toning them down, so it'll be fine. All right, so I'm going to use a little bit of this gray, and I'm going to start sort of carrying some of this shadow down into the eye itself. So a little Payne's Gray here is what I'm using. I've got to get some of these darks a little bit darker than I have them underneath the eye because the eyelid and this, the eyelashes are almost like a little hood and and they like it's like doing this right so they they actually cast a shadow on the eye itself so coming along and just putting a slight shadow in there Now this this um, shadow goes from kind of a gray down. Now it starts to get a little bit pink. So I'm going to take a little bit of my permanent rose and mix it into my gray and come around this tear duct with that. slowly but surely it's coming along you can maybe see me peeking out of there <laughs> but a um, little ways to go yet and so I'm going to start emphasizing some of the darks a little bit more maybe take a little of that diluted paints gray and start coming in and darkening the areas of makeup Definitely a darker crease there. Rinsing and blotting my brush to soften edges as I go. I'll do the same on the other eye. A little permanent rose in it. Rinse and blot my brush and now I'm going to just really soften this edge. It's a fairly deep crease there, so same here. I've got to really darken this as well. Softening edges is an important thing because otherwise you get a very cardboard cutout looking um, portrait. So I'm going to put, bring this down a little bit into the lower lid. I dripped a little bit on my reference. Oh well. Um, okay, so there's a little 
bit of a narrow margin of skin that you can see, and it's the angle of the eye, but there's a little margin of skin that you can see on the lower lid. So if I'm doing the shadow of the lower lid, it's not going to be right up against the white of the eye. It's going to be below that um, in most cases, okay? So I'm saying that, but there's exceptions to every rule. It depends on the angle of the head and the lighting conditions and lots of lots of different factors. But uh, typically, like you can see really clearly here, that there's a definite gap between where my um, iris is and where the lower lashes begin. So those are things that you really need to keep in mind um, so that it doesn't look like you're wearing uh, googly eyes, <laughs> you know, where they're kind of stuck on. So I'm just blending this, softening it, keeping it soft. And okay, so I need to darken a couple of things here. I'm just going to take a little bit of this skin tone and get this built up a little bit more here. The lightest part of the eye is going to be this middle part here because the light source is sort of coming from this direction, so it's going to hit the eye lightest right here. And then there's a crease in the eye, so it gets a little darker just in this little section here. A little bit darker color in there. So you can see how important it is to keep the transparency of the um, paper coming through because as we build up, if we don't have the light of the paper showing through in these, um, you know, these highlight areas of the skin, um, it, it has a different quality to it and it doesn't look as um, convincing. Um, now one thing that I'm not I'm bothered a little bit about is is these crisp lines here so I, I need to make sure that this is getting sort of blended in a little bit to the rest of the, the rest of the skin tones so I'm going to kind of overlap some of this rinse blot and I'm now softening some of this so that I can get a little bit more color up into the area, like the bridge of the nose kind of thing, where my glasses would normally sit. And now I'm just rinsing my brush and using a, a blotted brush to soften Ah, getting my reference wet. I hit that with a blow dryer so it doesn't run the paint, the ink. Okay, no matter. <laughs> All right, so, um, yeah, so I was blending in some of the the colors. So I can put a little bit more color here, for example. Nice wet color. Rinse my brush and just go around it to blend it in. So now I have that, that darker side of the nose so that I have a an actual sort of raised up nose look to it. I'll come in with some color and just soften with your brush to get that blended in. All right, so I'm gonna go with um, some more Payne's Gray here and start getting into the liner and 
the eyelashes. Right. You can see things, you know, sort of developing as we go along. You know, you can you can watch the replay of this and see all of this in uh, fast motion, and then you'll really kind of see that the whole development of of this. But um, lashes, okay. So lashes, the upper lashes don't start at the eyeball and go straight up and down. They first they go they almost depending on whether you're looking up or down or straight. Um, some people uh, will have eyelashes that almost dip down before they come up. Um, you know, they sort of droop down. Uh, depends on how open or closed the eye is as well. Uh, so those are all things to consider. And I'm going to start at the tip because my br brush has a nice tip on it. So I'm going to start there and I'm going to try and follow the contours. Don't want too much um, too much on my brush either. Uh, just a little bit. I'd rather load the brush more times and get those nice fine lines than to um, load up my brush and have a big thick line. All right, so I am following the contour. the The lashes not only taper. You know, they're they're finer at the tip, but they uh, are different lengths and sizes. Uh, so some are short, some are a little bit longer, but there's a real change in direction as it follows the roundness of the eye as well. So these ones may go to the side, and then the ones, by the time I get to the front, they start to really change. So you see here, right about here, right, in, right about where the middle of the eye is, uh, the eye, not the, not the pupil, but the middle of the eye, it starts to um, taper up, like straight. And then they get shorter as they get nearer to the tear duct. So I may have to darken some of this a little bit, but uh, the idea is there anyway. And so I'm going to come in here with a few of the lower lashes. The lower lashes, I tend to thin them out a little bit because the lower lashes, if you put um, too much dark, dark color on there, um, it's overwhelming. So I'm just going to put a little bit in here, just a little bit of... And I have to look where the where the lashes start uh, because they don't always start right at the at the eyeball. Because you know when you're when you have somebody at rest, the lower part of their eyelid, um, at the, you can actually see the space, the skin between, like like you can right here. So I need to make sure I'm leaving that space. I can see lots of things that I need to adjust, but uh, the ideas there. So um, these lashes here now, these ones you barely see. So this eyes, you know, maybe drooped a little bit, and so I'm actually seeing kind of a uh, almost nothing of the eyelashes here until I get 
um, to the side and then I see them quite pronounced. My finger slipped. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to leave that. I'm just going to leave it because anything I try to do right now will just make a mess of that. Um, and that's that kind of stuff happens, but I'm, I'll show you what I would do about that after it's all dry. I know it's tempting. It's like, get it off right away, right? <laughs> and uh, I've done that, and I've regretted that. So let me move that out of the way a little bit. There's a couple of lashes here that are so fine they're hardly visible. There's a couple of stronger ones. And there's a definite change in direction. All right. So I'm going to put a little bit more dark in the eye here just because now I now that I've got more painted I can see you know that I, I need there's adjustments I need to make so this is where I come in and but you know it's tempting to take off that masking fluid and everything else but I'm gonna I'm gonna hold off for a little bit longer before I do that Just playing a little bit with the iris and this I think I could get a little bit darker so now that the lashes are dry I can come in and soften this a little bit and there's a crease down here which I have neglected to do so I'm going to put that in A little bit more, a little more permanent rose for that, I think, and a little more darkening in this little tear duct. Rinse my brush and soften edges if I need to. And how are we doing for time here? Oh, I'm just I'm just lost in my own world here. It's almost eleven thirty. So um, I guess I'm getting to the point where I better wrap this up. So. Hopefully I've covered at least some of the anatomy of the eye, uh, a little better understanding of uh, what to look for and um, how to approach the softness by working wet into wet. So I'm just very gently adding in little bits of additional color here just to get things built up, but I want to see if I can take off that that bit there that I don't like you know because stuff like that happens so the reason I didn't want to do this while it was wet is because uh, especially something like Payne's Gray will smear like crazy so um, what I will do is now that it's dry I'm going to just dampen this little spot Just the little spot, not the whole the whole area around it, just this little spot. And lighten what I can. Now Payne's Gray is one of those colors that will stain, as I pointed out at the beginning, that it stained my palette. And um, 
if if pulling that off doesn't lighten up what you need to then um, I will actually do a little surgery on my painting um, I don't like to do this when it's wet but I will just show you uh, is I can actually just take a little retractable knife and very carefully scrape only only the offending spot now that does mean that if I paint on top of that that spots now damaged and it will have a a mark uh, but I would do this at the very end like after you've kind of fixed up everything you want to do then I would come in and I can remove the extra so you'll see in a second it's a little weird because it's it's wet I wet I usually don't wet it before I do this I would do this dry and uh, so I can just do a little tiny correction. I find often people try to, um, their corrections are like a little too aggressive and they end up with um, real blotchy stuff. So as crazy as those eyes looked at in the beginning, they actually look fairly, uh, fairly good now in terms of the being the right value and stuff. I'm um, just going to add a couple more lashes in here and then I want to get this dried so that I can put take off the masking fluid because I want you to see it with the without the masking fluid. Okay, so you can tell by by like soft creases like this that um, that this is an older person. It's not a, it's not a child. I I did do a demonstration before with a child, and uh, their eyes are quite blue and everything. Like the white of the eye is quite blue and everything else. Let me just quickly dry this. I'm going to remove masking fluid and I'll show you what I would do as the final touches for the eye. Okay, so I'm going to use my pickup tool, rubber cement eraser, and uh, I'm going to lift masking fluid. But as I said earlier, when the masking fluid comes off, it's going to be so stark and, and like way too white. And we're going to have to tone down a lot of this. So that's what needs to happen next. And some of this needs softening and toning down. All right, because um, it looks fake, right? So we don't want that. And um, yeah, so I'm going to take some of that same coloring. Let's take the one with the little bit of blue in it and stuff. And um, I'm going to start toning down this. Let's get the green colors in there. And I'm basically just putting a really thin wash over top. I'm going to go straight cobalt blue on some of this um, some of this eye here some of this reflection too much too much color cobalt yes but not don't want to kill it there we go um, always blot it if it's too much So I want to get those toned down a little bit. And I can see that, you know, here I kind of didn't get my masking fluid just exactly the way I wanted it. So I need to correct this uh, edge here.
All right, so I could I could spend an, an awful lot of time working on this, but I've already spent an hour and a half, so <laughs> that's probably loads of time. Uh, but the idea is there, and uh, I hope you got something out of that. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I've got um, lots of workshops coming up. If you want to check out my website, um, I've got my my upcoming fall classes uh, listed as well. Shellyprior.com listed right right there <laughs> and uh, so you can check that out for what I have coming I didn't even get into the eyebrows here but um, I could mix a little bit of my raw sienna or maybe even burnt sienna with my paints gray and get kind of a brown and just you know very very light strokes in here for the eyebrow which I could soften as I go along too, uh, but so I can put a few strokes. And I'm not. You notice I didn't put like individual hairs there. I can't see individual hairs. I'm just painting something soft. Right, so so that's the idea of the eyebrows anyway. All right, so thanks very much, everybody. We will see you next week. And um, by all means, put your um, suggestions in the uh, comments section because uh, I need ideas, right? So what I'll, I'll, I'll uh, see what I'm going to do next week. Love your suggestions and have a great week, everybody. Take care. Bye for now.